In this video, I'm going to show you how to sculpt the proportions of the head in what I believe the most simplest way possible. It can be really tough for beginners to get the head proportions correct when sculpting, which is the absolute fundamentals to making the head look good. Surprisingly, the details of the head are far less important and they can be quite abstract, but if the proportions are correct, then your sculpt will work. I've tried to make this as beginner friendly as possible, but a reasonable understanding of the interface is certainly suggested. Do check out my beginner playlist if you're completely new to Blender. If you like what I do, then do check out my sculpting playlist and my sculpting courses, such as this one about how to sculpt a dragon. Links to the playlist and a discount code for the courses are in the description. Now I'm using Blender 3.2.0. It doesn't matter what software you're using as the principles are always the same. Now I like to change my view very slightly if I press N on my keyboard and go to view, I like to change this to at least 120. It immediately looks a bit more isometric, but it's much easier to model faces, especially when you're close in like that, you don't have such a warped fisheye view. Also, I'll be using this image in the background. Looks a bit strange, but it's just there as a guide to show you how far I'm moving and adapting my starting shape. You can download this if you like, links in the description, or you can take a screenshot now, whatever's easiest, but it's not necessary, particularly if you've got a grid in the background of your software. I've inserted it into the background already. If you want to know how to do that, then check out my video in the description or the card in the corner now. So if I go to front view with the Cartesian coordinates over here by pressing this minus Y, you can see it in the background there, especially if I go to X-ray mode, you can see it just there. And again, on side view, if I press three on my numpad, that will also take me to side view, or you can press the tilde key, which is the one above the tab, next to the one on your keyboard, and you get this pie menu, and you can easily go to the different views from there. I'll press escape to go out of that and go into perspective mode and back into solid mode like this. So this should be your starting point. To start off with, I don't like to work with a cube, so I'll select that and delete it and shift A to add a new object, or you can go to the add menu up here and go into mesh, UV sphere. Now in order to line up with the grid, if I go into front view again with one and just quickly go to x-ray mode, you can see that it's a little bit larger. I've made my reference grid line up with the background grid. So you can see one, two, three small blender units. So that's 30 centimeters up to 90 centimeters because that divides into three nice and easily. And you can see my grid divides the sphere into half and into thirds. So in order for my sphere to match up, I'm going to scale it by pressing S and type in 0.9 and press enter. And you can see it matches my background image much more closely. And it will be much easier when I talk about splitting it into thirds. So scale your sphere to 0.9, so 90% by pressing S and then 0.9 and pressing enter. I'll come out of X-ray mode so we can see our sphere again and back into perspective mode. Now we're ready to go across to the sculpting workspace, which is up the top here. So I'll click on that. I've got my brush panel pulled right out here so you can see the name of the brushes I'm using. And I've currently got the grab brush selected. In the panel across the top here, you will want to turn on the X axis symmetry. So anything I do on one side will repeat on the other. Now you can see that movement I've done there you don't need to follow along with that, but you can see it's stretching my shape a lot. If I go into edit mode, you can see the faces have been stretched and that's what sculpting will do. I'll undo those changes though. What I'll need to do is add more faces to my sphere in order to sculpt it. For that, we come to the remesh. And the main thing here is the voxel size. That's the size of the new faces that it's going to create and the remesh button there. Now, if I press shift R, I can actually see the size of the faces that are going to be created and I think somewhere near 0 0.05 is going to be the best. It doesn't have to be precise, I just got lucky here. I'll left click there and press Control R to actually apply that. And now you can see I've got a lot more faces and it's not looking as stretched. If I do stretch it a long way, then I'll do a new remesh with Control R and you can see it's taken away that stretch and added in all those voxels. But I'll undo all those changes and I'm ready to sculpt. So into front view, again, you can use the Cartesian coordinates, the tilde key or one on your numpad. And what I want to do is cut off the sides of my sphere. For that, I can scroll right down to the bottom of my brushes and there's line project. Now we're trying to cut off this third here. So from here to here, and you can measure that in your grid, that's three units. Make sure you go from the bottom to the top like this, and you'll see it cuts off that shape. I'll just undo that for a moment and go back to front view. I'm actually going from inside the line slightly to outside the line slightly like this. I'll undo that because I'll show you what happens if you go from the top. You see the black area there. It tries to cut that off, but it all goes wrong because it's trying to mirror it as well and keep it as one object. So it just doesn't work. So go from the bottom to the top like this and the black area will be deleted. So we've got a shape like this. Back to front view. 
And now I'll scroll up a bit and I'll go to the grab brush. I'll press F to resize my brush and make it a bit bigger. Zoom in just a touch and I want to bring out a chin. Now we don't want to go from the bottom here and pull it down because if I go to side view, it's got this big slope to it. So I'll undo that and go back to front view. If we come from this line roughly here, so three small units down from the middle and click and drag and pull that downwards. You may have to do that in a few movements like this. That's absolutely fine. Don't worry too much about this shape here. We'll smarten that up a bit later, but just bring the chin down to the bottom line just there. Once you've done that, let's go across the side view and you can see it's nice and flat because we pull down from the middle here. Now we want the front of the head to actually come out slightly to around about here. This is a bit more arbitrary, but if I just start grabbing the front of my face and bring it out to around here, so that's one small unit past its original point and keep it fairly flat. So I'll just adjust these slightly, maybe come in a bit to somewhere around here is absolutely fine. Again, you can adjust this slightly as we go along, but roughly one of these small units away from the original starting point here. Next, I'll zoom out a bit and we need to work on the jawline a bit more. It needs to come across here and maybe up a tiny bit to around about here and then up into the middle. And that will go all the way up to this point here. So we can bring the chin down like this. Try not to adjust the end too much. So I'll push that up like that and we'll squash down to somewhere around here. Just slowly sort of squashing it about like this. You can always make your brush smaller if you want to be a bit more precise. So we're roughly around here. Now the side of the head here is very wide and flat and we can smooth it out by holding down shift and moving my mouse around and that smooths that all out like so. So holding down shift is accessing the smooth brush. So back to side view and we've ended up with this sort of shape like this. Now I need a neck coming down. So I'll come to the bottom of my shape here and I'll use the mask brush for this. If I scroll down a bit further, you can see the mask brush there. You can actually just press M to get to the mask brush. I'll make it a bit smaller and I'm just selecting this area in here for the neck. If you've drawn a bit too much, holding down control will delete areas of your mask. Don't worry if you've got the size wrong, you can easily adjust it when we go to side view in a moment, but just roughly the same as mine will be fine. Now what the mask brush does, if I go back to my grab brush just up here, and let's make that a bit bigger, I can only affect the white area. So it masks out areas so we can't sculpt on it. I'll undo those changes. If I press Control I now, I can invert the mask. And you can find these mask options up here under the mask menu. Now I can actually grab this area and pull it around. I'll undo that though, because there's a nice easy way. So with this area in white, I can scroll down and there's a move option just here. Let's go to side view and I can click and drag and move down a neck like this. For now, the back of the neck, just make it line up with the back of the head. The back comes out a little bit further than the back of the head, depending on the person and their posture. How far I come down is roughly three of my blue line units. So that's nine of these smaller units, but we are going across slightly as well. So we can just do that by eye roughly around there. So three, six, nine ish, somewhere around there. Once we've got to this point, I can clear the mask. So Alt M is to clear the mask. Again, you can go to the mask menu here and there's clear mask. And I can go back to side view and then back to my grab brush. So scroll up my brushes just here to the grab brush and I can start modifying this slightly and pulling it into position. So this is the chest coming down here and you can see my faces are getting very stretched. So this is a good time to press Control R to do my remesh. I can smooth this out by holding down Shift and just tapping a couple of times and I've smoothed it out. So back to side view and I can come out a little bit further here, maybe in a little bit here and smooth out a bit at the back. So we've got a sort of neck shape like this. You may also, if I come to the bottom here, want to pull it out this way slightly and create a sort of bust, but that takes a little bit more fiddling and you'll have to pull this area in at the front here. And we've got a bit more of a bust going on with some trapezius muscles of the neck just there. Back to side view and I'll just smarten the chin up a bit more. So we want a little bit of a crease in here so I can pull down from this area here and pull it into position. And we're going up, remember, to this point here. So this blue line, which is two down from the middle. So that's six units from the middle point. I'll just smarten up the bottom here as well. And you might have a little bit of an incline there. It depends on how much body fat this character might have. So we've come out to this point around about here and I can bring this out a little bit further, but we want to create a little bit of a crease in here for the top of the eyebrows. So I'll bring my brush down a bit. Try and make sure that you do actually get right at the front there 
and then pull in a little bit like this so there's a bit of a dent and then we'll have the nose coming out here. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger and I'll actually create a dent for the eyes now. So this is the brow line here, this middle point, so our eyes are just underneath that, round about here. And we don't want to go too far beyond this blue line here. So bring those back roughly to this line in here, so around about there for now. And we'll adapt this slightly as we go along. So that's again six away from the middle. Just come around to the front and see what that looks like. We need to squish it in this way as well. So squish the nose in towards the middle, a bit like this, and bring the brow down perhaps just a touch like so. So it comes down a bit closer to that green line there. And the brow does stick out a little bit like this. Depending on how much Neanderthal genes they have, they might want a bigger brow. Let's work on the nose next. So the bottom of the nose is here, but the front of the nose is actually slightly higher up. So there's a slope downwards towards the face. So we want to come out from about here and pull it out to around about there. And we can then bring this up slightly. So it joins the face at that bottom point. And we might want to just come out a touch there and do a tiny bit of editing somewhere around here. So around to the front, make my brush a bit bigger and squish that nose shape in a bit like this. And we're slowly getting there. Back to side view. I'll just bring that nostril up a little bit there. And it's getting a bit stretched around here. So I'll do a remesh with Control R. Now for the mouth, the lips don't start in the middle here. They start up a little bit higher. So at least one unit higher. And I'll resize my brush with F and pull this area out slightly and the bit underneath in. So there should be a slight slope downwards towards the chin at the bottom there. You can have the chin right back if you like or a prominent chin like this. It depends on the character. But this bit sticking out here for the lips should be at this grid line here, which is four up from the chin and two down from the base of the nose just there. So let's come around to the front and see what we've got. Let's actually go to front view now and start thinking about the shape of the chin. Now from this point, all the way down to this position here and I'll just go to x-ray mode to show you roughly where that will be. So that's about four wide for the chin. Again depends a lot on the character. You may possibly want to go as wide as this red line here so three but somewhere between there is fine. I'll turn off x-ray mode and we want to make my brush nice and big and just squeeze the chin in. So it's going right from here right the way down like so. so let's just see what that looks like from the side there. That's not too bad. Maybe just come back a little bit there. And the chin's probably a little bit wide, so maybe in a little bit there. Those type of adjustments I've just made there are a bit down to experience, and you'll get those as you go along. So we're in a fairly good position now. We've got a good shape of the head. Let's now add the eyes. I find this easiest for beginners in layout mode, so we'll jump back to layout mode. I'll zoom in on that area and shift right click to move my 3D cursor to roughly the eye position there, and shift A to add, mesh, and then UV sphere once again. I'll scale that right down to somewhere around about here. Again, I'll go to front view and zoom in. I'll press RX 90 to rotate my sphere around the x-axis at 90 degrees and press enter. That's nice because we get a sort of eyeball looking thing at the front there and it's kind of helpful when we're sculpting. Now the eye position wants to come up very slightly so it's in the middle of these two, the green and the blue. So around about there. I've moved my 3D cursor so it doesn't get distracting and you can see the middle point. Now I'm going to duplicate my sphere. So shift D to duplicate and move it across the x-axis. So shift D then X move it across the X until it's touching at the side here. I'll zoom out a bit and press Shift R to repeat the last action and make sure I've got six of them. And I'll select all of those by Shift left clicking and move them into the middle like this. Now why six you're probably asking? Well it's roughly six eyeballs that fit into the head across. Now lots of artists will be saying no it's actually five but that's the whole shape of the eye so that's including the tear ducts and things like that but the eyeball itself is a bit smaller. So you want six to go in your character. So I'll scale these all down, not quite to the edge here. I'll go out a little bit further because the cranium does actually stick out a little bit further at the back. And we'll model that a little bit later on, but it will stick out to somewhere around about here. So this is roughly right now. So I'll delete the eyeballs that I don't need up to here. And this eyeball in terms of its position along the X axis, I'll go to X-ray mode so you can see again and zoom in a touch, G then X and move that across and the middle is roughly on that line there. It's possibly very slightly out this way, but it won't make too much difference. But with a bit of experience, you'll be able to do this by eye, pun intended. So back out of X-ray mode, and we've got our eyes sticking out there. In terms of how far back it goes, we're fairly close to the right position there. Again, I'll turn on X-ray mode so you can see it. The front should be just about touching that line there. So it ended up being in quite a nice position. I'm back very slightly. It does depend a little bit on how 
deep in you've got this crevice and the point where the lips are and actually how big your nose is. But I'm about a unit away from this crevice. So back out of x-ray mode and I need to mirror this to the other side. I could of course just copy it and place it but it's much easier with the mirror. Just come down to the spanner here or the wrench if you're American, add modifier and there's the mirror modifier there. You won't see anything to start off with. It is actually mirroring by itself but on its object origin which is that yellow point in the middle there. If I use the mirror object picker I can pick this object as the mirror object and it will mirror to the other side of the face's object origin. If I select that you can see the object origin if I go to front view is right in the center there and the mirror has therefore jumped to the other side. Okay so with my head selected again make sure you have your head selected before going back to the sculpting workspace otherwise you'll be sculpting the eyes instead of the head. And we now need to just build up the area around the eyes for the eyelids and place the ears in. We'll start with the ears. There's a couple of ways of doing this. You can actually add a cylinder in and place it on the side of your head, much like we did with the eyes. And then you have to join it to the head object. A lot of people will probably find just creating a mask a little bit easier. So I click on the mask. I'll go to side view to show you where we need to create our ear. I'll scale down my brush again with F to somewhere around here and the ear height will go up to the green line so across the top there and down to the nose and the ear starts from the middle of the head so just behind the jawline. Now you need to draw this area slightly smaller than the actual ear size because the actual part where it connects is slightly smaller and then we'll make it bigger as we pull it out of our head. So if I hold down control I can delete areas of my mask to somewhere around here. So again, press Control I to invert. And we can do this part with the grab brush. Just come around to the side here, resize my brush and pull this out slightly, somewhere like this. I'm pulling it backwards slightly there as well. So I'm creating an ear shape like this. It goes back further at the top than at the bottom. So we've got something that looks a bit like this. You can go out fairly far, like I have here. The front comes in and the back does stick out a fair bit. Something like this. Okay, I'll press Alt M to remove the mask and I'll press Control R to do a remesh. So we've got a basic ear shape there. I might use a little bit of smoothing and maybe squish this in a bit and just adjust the shape very slightly. I might want to pull these sections down a little bit and push these in. We can sort these out a little bit with the crease brush later on. Let's just check we've got the height right. So again, from that green line there, so we can go up a little bit there. Make my brush a bit smaller, that's better. Easier to adjust to around about here and down to the bottom of the nose, just there. And that looks good. Okay, so that's the first level of detail and we've got our base mesh in there. To start adding the eyelids and a little bit more detail around the lips and nose and ears, it's probably worth remeshing a little bit finer. So Shift R to get those voxel sizes again and maybe coming down to something like 0.03. So roughly around there, left click and then Control R and we've got our more detailed remesh. Now I can use different brushes such as the draw brush or the clay strips. Lots of artists prefer the clay strips but beginners often prefer the draw brush, so I'll work with that. And we can come in here and add a little bit of bulk to this area here and the underneath of the eye. And there's a fair bit of bulk here and fatty tissue surrounding the eye, so we can go to around this point here. Let's just see how that's looking. If it's gone too far, then you can hold down Shift and smooth it out a little bit. Make my brush a bit smaller and start doing the eyelid now. And I'll have to keep brushing over to get that to come out to here and hold down shift to smooth it in. Looks a little bit jaggedy at the moment, but we'll do a remesh in a second and hopefully that will sort itself out. And an eyelid at the bottom here as well. So it looks a little bit strange at the moment, but as soon as I do a remesh with Control R, it tidies it up a little bit and now I've got a little bit more to play with. I'll smooth out first with the shift and then draw that in. Now my brow line might be a tiny bit high because this area looks a little bit big, but if you think about an iris being that middle area there, the top eyelid should come over the top of the iris like this. So roughly around that position there. Looks a little bit sleepy and dopey at the moment. And I'll bring it out just a touch to here. And the bottom eyelid is roughly in the right position showing a little bit more of that pupil around about there. Let's zoom out and see what we've got. Looks a little bit strange, but we're slowly getting there. I'm just going to go to side view. And yes, the brow line does need to come down a touch. So I'll make this bigger. Go to my grab brush. And just bring that down a touch more. It's about right. It looks a little bit strange at the front there. So I'll just bring it back a little bit. You may again find this easier with something like the clay strips tool and actually drawing a brow in like this, possibly a little bit simpler and then smooth out at the top there. Okay, another remesh. We haven't quite got enough detail for our eyelids. So maybe shift R 
and we'll do a finer remesh. I can't see my numbers very well, so I'll just come up to my remesh menu here and type in 0 0.02 this time and remesh. I try not to go too far because some people's computers can't quite handle it. And the more you add, the tougher it can be to work with. I can use my grab brush to start manipulating my eyelids like this as well. And just slowly holding down shift every now and again as well, bring these into the right position. There should be a slight slope down from side view here, like so, which I'm adjusting there, smooth out that end there, and we're slowly getting there. This bit's coming back a bit too far. Bring my brush in and bring the shape back a little bit more there. So that's roughly what we're looking for, a little bit higher up there, and we're getting there now. I can squeeze in a bit here for the nose, and again, every now and again, just do a remesh, control R, because we're stretching the mesh around the place. I'll just come out a bit there. I'm doing most of this with the grab brush and it's working reasonably well. Okay, so we've got our eyes in just there. I'll add another layer of detail in just a moment. Let's sort out the other areas like the nose. It's a bit wide at the top here, so we can bring that in and this area in here. The nostrils should come out to the beginning of the eye just there. Let's just bring this a little bit further back. Then you've got the tear duct area around about here. So that will be the edge of the eye and then the width of the nostrils. Make sure we've got that slope upwards. And we can come in here to the shape a little bit more. So dig in a little bit here. And there's a line that comes down here. So I'll just dig that in very slightly. And you can see that line emerging down towards the edge of our mouth. Again, I'll come back to the nose a bit more in a moment. Let's just get the mouth in. So back to side view, and like I was saying, the middle of the mouth will be around here. So two down from the top, four up from the bottom. For this, it's nice and easy with the crease brush. I'll make my brush fairly small and just mark that point there so I can easily see it from the front. Back to front view. And to create a mouth, we create a sort of U shape like this and then down like this in a sort of squashed M. I'll do a control R to do a remesh and do that once again. So a sort of U shape and then pointing down. So it's a very squashed M. You can see an M coming up and down like this. So with the crease brush still enabled, I can hold down control and that will pull out the mesh slightly. So I can pull out the top lip like this and just this bottom lip area here, not these side bits here, just the bottom area there. And we'll take a look at that. We'll need to adjust it slightly. So I'll go to the grab brush, make it a lot bigger and actually go to side view. And I need to pull the bottom lip inwards. So there's a slight slope down. Just a little bit of minor adjustment around here. This slope that I was talking about down here, we probably want this bit to come in a little bit more just here. So there's a bit more of that slope coming down. Maybe a little bit more solidity in this chin here. Our cheekbones here seem to be non-existent. So I'll just bring those out just a touch because our eyelids should indent and then come back out this way. So a little bit more cheekbone like this. And you can hold down the shift button to kind of smooth that out a touch if you need to. Okay, so we're slowly getting there. I'll come to this clay strips tool now and I'll add a little bit of bulk in the cheekbone. It actually comes from the top here, right down to here. And I'll hold down shift to smooth that out. So it sticks out very slightly and it actually hides the ears very slightly as well. You can probably see that we need my cranium at the back to be a bit bigger now. So I can come around to the back here. I use the grab brush, come around to the back a little bit more and let's just make it a bit wider at the back here. Possibly a bit too much there so I can smooth it back in and squish it back in and make a bigger rounded ball at the back. So you can see from the top here, the type of shape I'm creating. That's a little bit too wide, so I'll bring it in just a touch. I create a little bit more of a slope coming in like this. That looks about the right shape. So the cranium is wider at the back than it is at the front. I feel like I've gone up a little bit there, so I'll just bring that down slightly. So we're not looking too bad here. Now we can start adding a little bit of detail around the place. The crease brush is good for this. So I can come in and start thinking about the nose, the nostrils, make my brush nice and small, come out, make the nostrils there, and maybe bring a bit of detail of that line down there, under the chin as well, coming around here. Back to my draw brush and let's hold down control and create some actual nostrils now. Control R to do a remesh. I'll undo that and I'll go a bit finer now. So Shift R, bring that in to 0.1 or roughly 0.1 and Control R to do my remesh. So we're much finer now. Now you can start looking at your reference images and really think about the shape of the individual features of the face. Another brush is the Draw Sharp. It's like the crease brush that digs into your shape and I can create an area around my eyes just up here and down the bottom here. Smooth it out just a touch as well. Just make some minor adjustments to these. 
and the crease brush right at the very end. The crease brush pinches the mesh together slightly as well. And the reverse crease is very good on the eyelids to sort of square them out like this. So that's holding down control. And you may feel that you want higher resolution in your mesh for this. They're a little bit thick at the moment, so I can get my grab brush and make some adjustments there. I won't spend too long on this though, because it's not about the details. It's just about the proportions. So roughly there. For the ear, if I use the draw brush and I can just dig in by holding down control, you do a sort of question mark like this for the basics of the ear. And then we can flesh up the outside. Dig in for the ear canal. And it's a little bit messy at the moment, so I'll use the grab brush and just pull it into position a little bit more. And I use the draw sharp just to dig in at the back for the area where it connects to the head. Just a little bit more to do around the lips as well. Plump them up a little bit with the draw brush. Bit of smoothing out around here. Back to that crease brush and do the reverse crease again. So holding down control and a little bit of smartening up with the nose. So a little bit of volume in the nostrils there, a dent for the philtrum. And I use the grab brush just to pull that in a little bit. And we're not looking too bad. I feel like he's leaning forwards loads. So what I haven't done is the neck should be a bit more forward around about here. Easy to forget those sort of areas. You can use your crease brush to think about the neck muscles. We have a big muscle coming down here. so the dent for that would be around here as it comes down to the sternum and you've got an Adam's ad apple up in there, maybe a little bit of shape to the chin, a bit of a dent in here as the traps come back. So I would say this is a really good starting point for adding much further detail to each of the features, but it is important to have those proportions correct. I'll add in a little bit of a time lapse here of me just tidying things up and adding a tiny bit of detail just so I'm happy with the shape. But hopefully this has helped you to see how you can achieve the correct proportions of the face for your own models. To find out how to add more detail to certain areas, I do have other tutorials on things like ears, eyes, nose, and mouth. So do check out those links in the description. Any questions, then do comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.